Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos and season two of Batwoman is finally here on January 17th at eight on the CW. And I'm so excited to be talking to the new Batwoman, Javicia Leslie. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I got I mean, this is a huge deal, but I wanna take me back to, cause I remember when we saw the photo of you for the first time in the costume, what was it like to wear that for the first time? Cause I would expect it was all the feels, right? All the feels. I think the moment you put any superhero costume on, you just automatically feel like the responsibility to save the world. And that's kind of like initially how I felt. Um, it kind of comes with the territory of seeing that bat across your chest. Um, and then, you know, I had to dial it in and realize that we have to start creating this new Batwoman with this new suit and this new look and this new mission. Um, and that has really been like the driving force for me this season. So Kate Keen, no more. I know that's not a spoiler. Ryan Wilder, your character, comes in, discovers the suit. And I love the description of, of your of Ryan. It says that she's a sassy, smart lesbian with a difficult past. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> what, what does it mean for you? You know, to, I want to touch on that because for you, as a queer woman of color to be playing, you know, not only a bad woman, but, you know, to be bringing this inclusive storyline to, you know, the comic universe, which, you know, a lot of times we don't have a lot of those stories. What I love about Batwoman is like, they had already brought inclusivity with the fact that Batwoman was already a lesbian in the comics, which was so controversial when it first came out. Yeah. And, you know, and they stood their ground. They, it was, they, 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 they made sure to never change that. And I love that they made that still, you know, um, a layer in, in this Batwoman um, iteration as well. And then to bring it in as a woman of color, it's almost like now we're checking two boxes. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I think the most important thing is that representation makes someone watching the show feel included. It makes them feel seen, it makes them feel heard. And I think that we are coming from decades and decades of not seeing ourselves on TV. And then there's another layer when as an actress, I also connect with the character in the character's life. Um, so it's really kind of like a, a double honor, a double blessing to be able to play a character that is filled with so many colors and so many layers and that shows so much representation just within its one vessel. Um, and to be a part of that journey at all, to be at all a representation, to be at all, you know, a superhero that little, little ones can look to and feel like they see themselves, that part is the honor. Yeah, and this is the first black bat anyone, bat, there's been never been a black Batman. Live action. Yeah, 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 that's right. And so it's a big deal. And speaking of that, you know, how, did, growing up, did you, you know, did you read the comics? Did you watch the movies? Because there's been so many incarna uh, incarnations of, you know, Batman, Batgirl, Batwoman, it's all there. Yeah, I was a huge, huge Batman fan. Watched every Batman. Um, so growing up, like, I mean, to me, that was my superhero because he didn't have magic powers, you know? He was a normal human being, just like the rest of us, that made a, you know, an active decision, a, a choice to, to be a superhero, to save people. And it just so happens that he was wealthy. So he was able to have all these really cool gadgets and cool cars, but it wasn't like it was this power that he all of a sudden had to transition and, 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 and choose good over evil. It was like he did it because he saw that he lived in a society where evil was constantly winning. His parents were taken right in front of him, which is actually something that him and Ryan have in common. Her mother was killed in front of her. Um, and she, he made it a choice where he, he was going to be a part of a change in Gotham. And I think that that's something that, you know, Bruce, Ryan, both kind of like really have in common. I think, you know, thinking about comics in general, I feel that LGBTQ people, especially LGBTQ youth, connect to them because so many times it's telling the story of someone who feels othered or feels less than and feels, you know, not a part of something. Yet we really haven't seen until more recently that kind of representation within the characters, like your character. So what does it mean for you to kind of be be able to be kind of bridging those two? And, you know, hopefully so many of the LGBTQ comic fans 
are going to feel like they're finally seeing someone like themselves. Because that's the point, right? Like, your superhero shouldn't be this person that's so either one, unattainable, or two, you've seen it a million times before, and now you feel like that's the only version of a superhero that can ever exist. I think that the idea and, like, the appealing part about superheroes is that you should be able to see yourself. You should be able to feel like, oh my goodness, I can be a superhero. Like that's intriguing to me. I remember when Black Lightning first came out and the role of Thunder um, came and I saw Nafisa just really be this powerful black woman, you know, lesbian on TV, you know, proudly and unapologetically. And I, I felt, I could see how many people would feel represented by her character because I felt represented by her character. So I just think it's really important that you know, we, we show the different colors of humanity with our superheroes. We have to bridge those gaps because now when you think about it and you see kids dress up as superheroes, they're no longer dressing up as someone that doesn't look like them. They can now dress up as someone that actually represents where they come from. There's going to be a whole new slew of Ryan Wilder Batwoman. There's going to be curly afros Halloween. everywhere, okay? I <laughs> love that. You know, thinking about that, you know, talking, you know, with Ryan, you know, her character being a lesbian, what can, I know you, I know they won't let you reveal anything, but are we going to see, you know, some love interest, maybe some romance? Definitely. I mean, we can't have a show with Batwoman without yeah. seeing some type of sexy love interest. I, I know that's like one of my favorite parts about the first season. It was just like yeah. a lot. And I kind of liked it, you know, like to be able to see really like the playboy image be put in a whole nother, you know, female perspective. Um, but Ryan isn't a play, isn't at all that. But just to see her um, go through her own romance, you'll see it. It'll definitely be a journey. I don't well, know if you'll be rooting for or rooting against it, but you'll I'm, definitely be. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Was it, uh, you know, I, I can't even imagine what it would be like, what well, A, to do those romantic scenes, but then the physicality of it all, being a superhero, what was that like for you to kind of take on? Because I would imagine you haven't done anything quite like playing Batwoman in your career mm -hmm. until now. <laughs> I come from a martial arts background. Amazing. Um, I practice Muay Thai and uh, bow staff and kickboxing. Um, they're all kind of like releases for me. So to come into this role, like it, it felt pretty natural to be honest with you. Um, I think the only difference is when I'm practicing it, I'm not like in this suit. Um, so if there is anything that I had to kind of like get adjusted to and kind of get around was to be able to express myself physically while still being in my suit. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine what that would be like to do all of those moves wearing that heavy. The suit is probably much heavier than we think, right? You know, the suit is actually not as heavy. I think the part that people don't realize is as heavy is the cowl. Uh -huh. That's like pressing on my head. And it's funny because um, I had spoken to Grant who plays Flash when I first got here and I, and I just said, why didn't you tell me this cow is like a situation, you know? Like, why didn't you tell me that? I would feel like my head is being pressed in the entire time. So that that really was the first part of the journey is kind of like getting around being comfortable in that. And then like my amazing makeup artist, uh, Corey Roberts, she spoke with the team that creates our cows. So they have found a way to make it a lot more comfortable for me. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's something on your face. So it's something to get adjusted to. And it's funny because I remember uh, reading um, interviews with like Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer when they were playing their characters and that's one of the first things they said too was like getting around having that cow in your head is like a huge part of it. But you wear it very well. I, I, what I've seen it looks very very good on you. Um, thinking Thank about you. the you know that's that's what that's the whole thing. There's such a universe and the fandom around Batwoman and these comics are so strong I know the show is just starting, so you're going to start to get an even, you know, wider group of fans, but have you gotten any sort of, like, whether it's on social media or any of the fans hitting you up, how, telling you how excited they are about, you know, this, this new Batwoman? All of them! They're so cool! I love them! I love them! Um, and it's so cool, the international fans, like, Brazil shows up! <laughs> so super <laughs> exciting, super fun. But you know who reached out to me? I haven't really told anyone this. But I got a DM from Shaquille O'Neal who said, hey, just want you to know I love Batwoman and I'm rooting for you. So it's kind of cool to see people that are like my version of superheroes. I mean, he was a superhero, yeah. Shazam, but like to see my version of superheroes growing up 
look at me and and and, and root on for for my journey. So yeah. That's incredible. Hey Shaq, that's awesome. Hey Shaq. <laughs> he is a superhero for he sure. Is. Yeah. Uh, speaking of superheroes, you know, I'm thinking about that. You've mentioned some of them, Michael Keaton, uh, Val Kilmer. Did you ever have any sort of crush growing up on any superhero? Because I I, I feel like there's been so many good ones. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm like, just think about that for a sec. Damn. <laughs> I can already tell you. Okay, so I do like Christian Bale's Batman. Like if I had to yeah. say, hey, that's one of them. Um, I loved Halle Berry's Catwoman. I think she was so damn sexy in that. Yeah. Hey girl, hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I had to say it, another a hot superhero was the guy that played the Superman in Smallville. And he did one of the crossover episodes and he was still like nice and slow. And I was like, oh, that's uh, <laughs> Him, Christian Bale, Halle. And Those are yes. pretty good ones. Pretty yes. good ones. Well, Javicia, this is so exciting. We are so excited for you and just thinking about, obviously when we heard you were gonna be this character, the world was in a much different spot. And now the premiere is happening and we're all in lockdown in a pandemic. How are you, sir, you know, keeping your head together and what advice do you have for every other LGBTQ person out there who's probably tired of being in quarantine by now? I would say, listen, we have that woman coming up Yes. Um, and you'll be able to really allow your imagination to escape with our show, which I think is so needed. Um, fortunately, me being able to go to work is kind of like my outlet, my release during this time. Um, but if I had any advice to give my people, it would be to use this time to tap into that artistry. We all have an artist within us and start doing things that make you happy, the things you considered hobbies, you should really start to tap into. Because I live by the, the model, you follow your passion, you will find your purpose. So tap into those passions and use this time. I love that. I know, I, I need to get a new hobby. I need to do something. I need to do, write yeah. something or painting. I don't even know. Besides, I study drawing. Oh, I like that. That's a good one. I know. My hobby is trying to keep my dogs from barking during interviews, which doesn't always work. <laughs> well, listen, first of all, you you're you live in their house, okay? Exactly. So, <laughs> you should be happy. They just allow you to do anything that they're allowing you to do. I have a dog. So I they do. will be snuggled up with me uh, for the premiere on January 17th at eight o'clock on CW. And then a reminder, it's on every Sunday at yes. eight on the CW after. It's just beginning season two of Batwoman. Congratulations, Javicia. We can't wait to see, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you in person soon enough. 